So, Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky, I think, came out about 1866, something like that, in Russia, obviously, from the epilogue. He was in the hospital from the middle of Lent till after Easter. When he was better, he remembered the dreams he had had while he was feverish and delirious. He dreamt that the whole world was condemned to a terrible new strange plague that had come to Europe from the depths of Asia. All were to be destroyed except a very few chosen. Some new sorts of microbes were attacking the bodies of men, but these microbes were endowed with intelligence and will. Men attacked by them became at once mad and furious, but never had men considered themselves so intellectual and so completely in possession of the truth as these sufferers. Never had they considered their decisions, their scientific conclusions, their moral convictions so infallible. Whole villages, whole towns and peoples went mad from the infection. All were excited and did not understand one another. Each thought that he alone had the truth and was wretched looking at the others, beat himself on the breast, wept and wrung his hands. They did not know how to judge and could not agree what to consider evil and what good. They did not know whom to blame, whom to justify. Men killed each other in a sort of senseless spite. They gathered together in armies against one another, but even on the march the armies would begin attacking each other. The ranks would be broken and the soldiers would fall on each other, stabbing and cutting, biting and devouring each other. The alarm bell was ringing all day long in the towns. Men rushed together, but why they were summoned and who was summoning them, no one knew. The most ordinary trades were abandoned because everyone proposed his own ideas, his own improvements, and they could not agree. The land too was abandoned. Men met in groups, agreed on something, swore to keep together, but at once began on something quite different from what they had proposed. They accused one another, fought and killed each other. There were conflagrations and famine. All men and all things were involved in destruction. The plague spread and moved farther and farther. Only a few men could be saved in the whole world. They were a pure chosen people, destined to found a new race and a new life, to renew and purify the earth. But no one had seen these men, no one had heard their words and their voices. So that pretty mind blown passage. So obviously when it mentions about a plague and microbes, especially coming from the depths of Asia, you go bloody hell. But I think it's important that it's he's referring to it. It, I think it's really symbolising it. It's like um, some a contagion of ideas, and I mentioned before about you know particularly the crime and punishment, brothers Karamazov, and it was it's fascinating that it's like sort of at the be the beginnings where all these what were then new ideas, these so called progressive ideas. And you had this, these radicals that were trying to throw off all the things of the past, the, the state, but also religion. And it was all this growth of secularism and this scientism and the, the idea that, that, that man was superior and um, didn't need God and God didn't exist. And throwing off all these different values, beliefs. Of the past and very much these novels are a sort of a battle with that and it's a sort of a battle within the main character Raskolnikov um, and then there's sort of different characters around him that have these different um, elements if you like Bakhtin referred to the dialogic novels you've got these different voices dialogues with different points of view if you like and it's it's like a um, conflagration and a, a battle between these different points of view and what's going to win out um, I mean I, I remember I, I, I've seen websites and I've seen a lot remember stuff in the past we're talking about Dostoevsky and it and one website I have no idea now what, what it was but it was it was revering Dostoevsky but it was it was talking about a lot of people, I think, were putting it as um, 
well, where he has characters like Raskolnikov in parts here and there's a character Ivan in Karamazov Brothers who's sort of embracing these new ideas and rejecting the spiritual, the moral, the, the religious. Um, but Dostoevsky himself was passionately, he, he was arguing against those kind of, um, that complete throwing off of belief and morals and and spirit. What was that quote he said about God? If, um, if God does not exist, everything is permitted. So that was a line that was... Um, I think said by Ivan, or it was it was around his character, but his character had you know it's, it's presented as sort of whether it was a delusion um, of him going mad, but he sees the devil and has this conversation with the devil. Um, so it's sort of that kind of thing where the this these these new ideas, this secularism is is presented almost as being devilish, and everybody was thinking, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. He, you know, and I remember on this website sort of thing, it was referring to that phrase, but it was seeing it more as because those people or the person doing that website, from their point of view, they were, they didn't believe in God. So for them, that phrase was saying, God doesn't exist, therefore everything is permitted. But it was this way of twisting things around because that's not what Dostoevsky himself believed and he was actually he I mean he passionately believed in God um but he was he was uh criticizing that way of of, of thinking and I think where this passage I mean this is Raskolnikov and I'm you know <laughs> uh I won't sort of spoil the whole story although it's a couple of hundred years old or whatever but but you know it's it's from the start you know it, it, it he, he commits a murder um or murders and and then it's all this sort of uh, great moral um emotional spiritual crisis within him where he's having this de debate about you know what he's done and where he goes and salvation and, and what's the way forward but why he commits this murder is basically he, he gets this sort of, if you like, an inflammation of these ideas, you know, these concepts of that man is Superman or man can become Superman and certain men are chosen above others. That's still the end of the passage there when it's talking about a chosen uh, few that will survive this um cataclysm after this new plague and they will be the ones that will be the only ones to sort of survive and thrive on this new world and that's very much where we see those in power now creating what they want to be as a new world order and again as I say I think it's sort of the the, the beginnings of the, the time when Dostoevsky was writing for and obviously in Russia you know those ideas sort of came out in the, the communist revolution, but it, it's coming maybe into its fullest fulfillment, if you like, now in, in our time around the world. But, you know, and, and so much in that passage was sure. I mean, you know, even though we obviously have had at least um, uh, supposedly what's been promoted as an actual plague has been talked about like that but basically a virus but talking about my microbes but it, it's it's more about that it's it's to do with the the mental um contagions the mental um way people have been taken over and that's well, obviously what we've what we've seen what what has been whether there is viruses you know that have been causing harm to people whatever we know the most damaging thing the most controlling and is is what people have done psychologically with that and how people have been set against each other which in that passage there that people 
um, start fighting amongst themselves, you know, and they this confusion of ideas and what is the truth, and that people keep saying, oh no no that's that's not true. This is the way forward, and then no, nothing can be. They they threw off the beliefs of the systems of the past, and yeah, many of those systems were destructive. You know, in Russia there was this serfdom which had recently been removed at that time um, in Russia but but they were overthrowing it with with something that that wasn't better and became actually worse and a lot of the things that people gained strength from these cohesion between groups communities countries even was being has been ripped apart and we've seen that being forced more and more in our time where you know there's people being set against each other people being put into different groups and seen as opposing one another um, and they're also encouraging famine and war all these destruction but it's not it's not really it's not isn't it at basis it's not the microbes it's a psychological um, virus yeah so True. what it reminds me of and we did have mm. a chat about this in Sainsbury's mm -hmm. so two things the setting people against each other mm. well we know that they've been doing that you know mm. making oh everybody's racist again you know because it would mm. all die down and nobody was and now all of a sudden the young people are like oh god they're all racist again but also there's the pots and pans you know, going on Facebook and saying, Susan next door didn't bang a pot and pan. But I think the worst one that we're seeing is the infight in a month, the true first for want of a better yeah. word. And we were talking about that this morning and how a lot of people that we've watched and we really admire and have got massive audiences can't take criticism and are starting to say things like, well, if you want the truth, just come to my channel. I'm not going to name any names, but we, we reeled off about five different people, didn't we? Mm. That they've got quite big and... It's their way or the highway. And um, I've unsubscribed to, well, I'll say Stephen Cambion, simply because I very politely challenged him and it was a my way or the highway situation. So that's n not really relevant to anything, but we reeled off about five people that are basically recently just coming out and saying, you know, oh, so-and-so's a shield, so-and-so's a grifter, so-and-so's a this, so-and-so's a that. Instead of just like focusing, I mean, we're ripping ourselves apart within mm. they don't have to do it anymore yeah but that's getting yeah. worse mm. so even the people that weren't doing that i've noticed are starting to do that now mm. yeah so it's it, yeah yeah but Everyone's going back coming. to the bible i'm sorry but i do mm. keep going back to the bible and i'm not mm. a christian people seem to think i've got this christian belief no did but don't now it's the only thing i know kind of quite well um the times will be when brother is set against brother Mm. And that is the times now, and that's kind of what he's talking about there. Yeah. Well, when you say in the Bible, because it was making me think of um, the Tower of Babel. Yeah. And this idea of suddenly that everyone, no one can understand each other, and hundred percent, and they're all fighting amongst each other. Um, and <laughs> I'm just going to plug my novel, The Individual. Well, you haven't done it for a few months. There so is. <laughs> might as well. There is uh, a Tower of Babel. Uh, Passage, passages in there and I think again it's this idea of, of people not being able to communicate and this, this breakdown of things um, and maybe in the space between there is something where we can find some connection again to to the, the source or something I suppose for want of a better word but yeah just really wanted to read out that passage and but this is like on the back of when Mark read out um the one that we've called Useful Idiots, because you read another Dostoevsky passage. I can say the word now. Mm -hmm. Dusty Biscuits. Mm -hmm. Dusty Biscuits. The last video you did on this, I think I called Useful Idiots, and that was about... It Well, as you say, there's different characters that sort of embody different things, and there's a... But it was in that book. Yeah, there's a... Yeah, in Crime Project, there's a, there's a, a minor character, I can't remember his name of. He doesn't appear very much, but he's... He's someone who is caught up in these new ideas, radical, and he's trying to be radical and progressive. Actually, it reminds me in a way of if, if 
people from our generation only remember the young ones and good old Rick Mayle mm. and and his character Rick in the young ones and he was like oh trying to be like all right really, on man really radical and that's what you used to say right? you know but just really just showing he's, he's pathetic and just trying to get his end away or whatever <laughs> but he was trying to be oh, oh I need to be oh pe- yeah N- not just peace and love but um PC yeah um uh so I was going with that um no, it's so, just saying what was in the so last yeah, so so yeah, that that character, you know, he was he was saying he um he he just identified with whatever was seen as the new and radical idea, and he used to spout these things off, but whatever the idea was, it would it would be made um, less relevant um, because whatever he would say, he would just sort of trivialise it, and he was basically just caught up in his his own ego i suppose um and just going with whatever the the latest the thing. latest thing and that book was written when i think it came out 1866 like with that sort of era it's like with dickens as well they they came out first um sort of a chapter at a time like serialized in like magazines periodicals that's how they lots of these um old sort of victorian era um came out but 1866 i think it was published so do we think they were doing this back in dr jesse's time because we know it goes round and round and round mm. or did they get an idea to do it from him you know what i mean or some people go oh he was a shoe mm-hmm. he was a shoe yeah i he's a wackadoo mm-hmm. i think the playbooks just go round and round again personally yeah, i think i think you were talking before about cycles and i think he was just in this um tumultuous time of change time of transition that well that was happening all over um but you know particularly in russia it was it was um alexander the great i think and he um no not alexander the great he was the greek book <laughs> peter the great i think um uh but he he revolutionized not in terms of the actual communist revolution but he changed a lot of things in Russia he freed the serfs where you know the majority of the, the Russian pe- population it was like a feudal system so he, he got rid of a lot of that and he wanted to embrace these western ideas um, that had come you know with sort of France after the revolution there and you know these sort of radical ideas so he was trying to be well he was trying to be modern for the time so they sort of had this created sort of clerical middle class and trying to have this um you know these new institutions and trying to these secular institutions and yeah trying to be more like these western values because russia's always been that on that crux because obviously it's in the, the biggest country in the world and it's so enormous and it covers half of asia you know from one end to the other but you've actually got a very smart small part of it which is the, the most populated part which is in Europe so it's always had this sort of crossover between Europe and Asia um, but I guess it was all almost it was always very um, uh, separate from other parts of Europe and very much a different very different kind of a place um, so he was trying to bring it closer to Western European countries so I, I think you know and Dostoevsky I mean this is set in St. Petersburg and that was a city that was built um, by Peter the Great. And I, I remember there was stuff where it was one of these sort of things where sort of someone has a, a big vision of what they can do and they're going to do it no matter what. But I think it like built this city and it's like on marshland or something. So completely impractical to build it and I think like they had to build the city a couple of times because it sort of like sank <laughs> so then they built another one on top of it and um so it sort of I remember when I was sort of studying at university talking about how it was sort of a quite a had an almost otherworldly aspect to it I mean it was a grimy modern city in the in that time and it had all the poverty which Dostoevsky really describes very very you know very well in here but but he but he was also a visionary and he had you know there's all these um so you know reference to dreams um and the spiritual if you like um 
And apparently, I think, I remember reading something where he, Dostoevsky had a, he himself looking at St. Petersburg, whether it was, I think, from maybe just outside the city, from across the river, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, it's almost like a vision where he saw like a, like a ghostly version of the city sort of hovering above the, the material one. So, it was, you know, yeah. this, this idea of, I guess, different planes of existence and a, a more spiritual or less, you know, immaterial element to things as well as the material. So I think a lot of that's within his book. But, but yeah, I think, I, I think I found it very, I found it fascinating. Re I, I read these books years ago, but rereading them, it's, I don't know, something drew me to, I'm not quite sure what it was really, to, 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 to go back. I mean, I've got loads of books I've never read before that I would want to read. But something sort of drew me back to read Karamazov Brothers and now Crime and Punishment again. And maybe that was that was that was a lot of what, what did draw me to it. The fact that it is incredibly relevant to mm -hmm. the times we're in now. It's sort of going back to see where this sort of mini cycle, not the sort of Yuga cycle, because they're like hundreds of years each one, but this sort of cycle within a cycle, maybe. I think maybe there's um there's a there's a lot in there that you know it was sort of going back to the origins and so much you sort of read there and you think that's that's just you know like uh origins of sort of wokeness or this um idea manipulation that that's that's so prevalent now and it just sort of goes to show when you take it back to then um yeah that things are all in cycles but um I guess that's always just good to know um, where things come from. <laughs> I think I've run out of steam now. Uh, and on that note, I think we should introduce um, somebody who will be part of what we talk about. And he's going to make an appear guest appearance every now and again. It's mm. not the associate. It's the floating pineal gland. It would be really good if I had an extra hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs>